The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model or story. It's putting yourself in a peak state where you follow through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little bit each day, and then you get momentum. But the most important thing of all is what we start out with. Why? Absolutely. Why is it a must for you? It doesn't have to be you're against a wall, but it has to be something you're hungry for, because the only difference in people is hunger. And if you're not hungry, get around people that are hungry and something will hit you. You watch a conversation, you get around people that are doing better, and all of a sudden you start going, uh, my life sucks. I remember I went to a guy in, in LA, he's one of the most multi-billionaire guys, I'll never forget, and I lived in the Del Mar Castle, and I was really proud. That was like the symbol of me having taken myself from being poor to providing for my family this great place. It's built from castles in Europe overlooking the ocean, not far from you. And I went to this guy's house, he's a billionaire, he took me down to his wine cellar, and I don't even drink wine. Went through this whole thing. At the end of the night, I was depressed. I lived in a Del Mar tenement, as far as I was concerned. I really was. I was like, I live in a crappy place, and, and all my standards changed. All of a sudden, I wasn't willing to settle for living that. All of a sudden, my back was to the wall in a different way because as a man, I knew I was capable of more. So people can change their standard by getting around where it's better. People can change their standard by getting associated with what's true, like the bills they gotta solve, the problems they gotta do it, or they can do it because they're excited because it's something new they wanna take on. Everyone's different, but they gotta find the why, and they gotta come up with some daily rituals to get them going, and just do a step at a time. That's where you get momentum. That's a sort of five point plan that anyone can follow to get over stress and trauma in their lives. Talk me through it. Well, I think, that, first of all, I wanna make one thing clear. The quality of your life is the quality of where you live emotionally. Like we all have a home. Angry people find a way to get angry, even if their life doesn't have to be angry about. We can always find it. Sad people find a way to be sad. Caring people find a way to care for other people. So one thing you gotta identify is where are you living? What's your home? What's your habit? And then the way to change it is that when I was homeless, literally on my own just getting started, I didn't have the internet, but I decided I had to go to a library and I had to feed my mind. And I always tell people the first stage is, you know, weeds grow automatically. Uh, one of my teachers taught me, he said, every day stand guard at the door of your mind and feed it something good. Because if your worst enemy puts sugar in your coffee here, you're fine. If your best friend by accident trying to help you put some strychnine, you're dead. So if you feed your mind every day, 30 minutes a day of reading something, hearing something. Second, you got to strengthen your body. And the reason, Pierce, is fear is physical, right? So is stagnation, so is numbness, so is sadness, such, so is rage. And when you go in and change your body by an intense workout or a run or even an intense walk and the blood's flowing through you, science has shown it instantly changes your biochemistry. And now your mind and body are working together. Third thing, all these people did in common, if you watch, they found a mission bigger than themselves. Yeah. Something that they wanted to aspire to that was worth more than their pain. And then the fourth thing is you gotta find a role model. You know, you heard it with Nick, um, almost everybody finds a role model that makes it real. I was with uh, Warren Buffett and with Sarah Blakely, the youngest uh, billionaire. We're doing this round table about the future. And when you listen to this woman, when women meet her, they don't just love Spanx or product that made her a billionaire. They love this woman because she's a role model of what's possible. Yeah. When you get a role model, it becomes real to you. If you get a plan, you get a goal plan, and you take massive action. And the last step, number five, there's always somebody all worse off than you are. I don't care what you've done. So if you can go help somebody worse off, it puts your life in perspective, and it also reminds you life's not about me, it's about we. I always tell people, the secret to a great life, the secret to living, is giving. And there's when you realize there's something in you still to give, even if you lost your legs, even if you've been through a horrific financial situation, your life can improve, but more importantly, you'll have a meaningful life because your life will contribute to other people. You think about the first thing that determines whether you can do something or not, and I put that in this first box at the top here on the left side, it's potential. Like, what's the potential of a human being? Like, when you guys started, you proved something no one had done in history. You ran the four-minute mile, right? For golly knows how many centuries, they're trying to run a four-minute mile. Roger Bannister does it. How did he do it? Do you remember? You did it in this industry, right? You made a million bucks in a day. No one had ever done that in history, right? After you did it, a bunch of other guys are doing it in case it became possible. Roger Bannister didn't just go physically practice. He made a shift in his head. He practiced in his head because he could never achieve it physically, so he had a change in his head first so that the result became certain enough he believed it, and then his body got him through. After Roger Bannister ran that four-minute mile, within two years, 37 people ran a four-minute mile. So wow. When no one in history had ever done it. Now, here's how it works. The potential for anybody getting your product is extraordinary. They could do what you've done as much, more or less. They can do whatever they want to do. The potential's there. The market's proven that. Whether or not they tap into potential has a lot to do with what action they take, which is the question you came to me with, right? Like, you know, God, they all have potential, but they're not taking action. And we all know that the action they take is going to determine the results they get. That's pretty obvious. So 
Most people have a belief about what their real potential is no matter what you tell them. And that affects how much action they take. And of course that affects the result. And then ironically, that result reinforces their belief. And then that belief affects it. So I'll give you an example. Let's say a person has unlimited potential, we all agree. But they take little action, little results. Why? Because they have to start with a problem with their belief. They don't believe it's really going to happen for me. Maybe for Frank Kearns because he's got the cool hair and stuff. Or maybe it's for you because you're so driven, but it's not me. Maybe Tony Robbins because he's afraid he got these big teeth. Whatever their thought process is, right? They got this thing, right? But what happens is if you believe that there's very little potential, how much action are you going to take? Nothing. Nothing, little. And when you take little potential with a little action, what kind of results do you get? lousy little results and when you get little results what does that do to your belief you go see i told you this was a waste of time sold you this wouldn't work and then what happens you tap even less potential you take even less action you get even worse results and your belief gets even weaker and this sucker feeds on itself until you are in a downward spiral it's poisonous it's poisonous and it's self-fulfilling now what if something could happen that could come along and fill you with a sense of absolute certainty not like i believe but I mean well you know in you guys's case mine as well we knew because we had to, because we burned the boats. There was no other option. We had to find a way. We had. We weren't going to live that way. We all did it in different ways and for different reasons. But in essence, that was it. If you get yourself in a state of certainty that this is going to work, I'm going to find a way. And if this doesn't work, I will make the way. Then you tap a lot more potential. And when you're certain in your potential, you take massive action. When you take massive action, you really believe in something. You get great results. When you get great results, your brain goes, "See, I told you I was a stud." I told you this thing would work out. Now you're even stronger. You tap more potential, take greater action, greater results. That's how you went from 300 bucks in a week to 2,500 in five days to 100,000 in a month to a million bucks in a day. Same thing with you. And we get momentum. That's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now, some people go out and they go, well, I'm going to take a bunch of action. All right, I'm going to open this product. I'm going to try it. And they'll say to you, I even did it. But it's like a salesman who goes and knocks on the door and he knocks on 100 doors and says, you don't want one of these, do you? Yeah, exactly right. You know? <laughs> and even if he doesn't say it verbally, his face says it because he doesn't believe it's going to work. So his voice, his body, the execution is so weak. Maybe if he talks to 100 people, somebody's going to buy out of pity. <laughs> they don't want his kids to starve, right? But he's not going to get the result. So the core difference in people is how do you produce certainty when the world isn't giving it to you? You go out and you try and you try in your case, you're 100,000 in debt and nothing's working. How do you keep yourself going? The way you did it, the way I did it, the way you're doing it, we may not have done it consciously, is we didn't change our potential. That was there. And it wasn't even taking more action. Taking more action with a belief it's not going to work, it's not going to change anything. We got results in our head that made us feel certain as if it had already happened. What do I do when I feel the fear paralysis that happens when my mind starts to run wild? It seems like there is a cascade of doom and gloom thoughts, and I can't seem to take any action. I just worry. You know, people who are not used to having that emotion are having it yeah. these days. Well, we've all had it at different times of our lives. We just forget. And I think mm. what he has to do is, what's a time in your life that you had an enormous crisis, but what pulled you through? Again, we have people go through on that site and answer five questions. And what it basically does is help you figure out where was this crisis before? You may have even forgotten about what pulled you through, what belief, what strategy, what experience, who helped you, what triggered you, and then what did you do that made that shift? But I would also say, remember one affirmation, if you would, in your mind and your body, own the fact that money is not your life. This is just money. I mean, when I was told I had a tumor in my brain, later on, years later, when I thought I might lose my wife to cancer, I'm gonna tell you something, money doesn't matter at all. But when we get focused on what matters most, we're there. So I mentioned earlier, getting physical is really important because fear is a physical thing. So you sit around and think saying. about it, not just exercise, going for an intense run, lifting weights, something that pumps the blood and oxygen through you because when you do that, your entire psychology changes. You see the world through a different place. So I'd say it's contrast of other people's great stories. Model the best that's in you. When have you been through these things before? You've been resilient if you're honest with yourself and get totally physical and make that a ritual for you. And then you'll start to look for role models of how to turn things. Around. Can I add one? Yes, please. Hug people. Oh, Just I love that. Hug, well, come here. Come here. <laughs> Hug people.
people and just, you know, and embrace embrace human beings who are all around you and make sure that you're a good friend so that they can be a good friend to you and I, you'll feel better. I think the most important thing you do is get outside yourself. If you go out to try to help somebody else, we have a basket brigade and we feed three million people a year at Thanksgiving from all over the world and it's because somebody fed my family. When you go out and help somebody else, you realize you have no problems. You realize how and lucky you are. And you feel like you have something to give and we all need meaning in our life. We don't want to just get. The life now is about what can you give. That's what will light you up.